Hi, welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I'm your host, Hoshonda Sanders, and this is my fancy shirt. Um, it says, I am the author of my own story. I got it at the African American Children's Book Fair that I uh, appeared at, and I read from my book, um, I Can Write the World, at, and so um, it's just nice to get a little bright color going uh, while while we're all in self-isolation um, but I did want to do a quick video um, I can put the link to my virtual reading of I can write the world in the description box below for those of you who have purchased it if you could do me a solid and write a review on Amazon I would appreciate it it really helps with the visibility while I work on the next book and what else uh, I've just been reading up a storm um, both on my uh, Kindle app um, by way of Libby which is my favorite library device that the New York Public Library uses virtually so if you don't know about that you should definitely check it out um, I started reading Ordinary Girls by um, Jaquita Diaz I want to say is her last name um, but I hope that I'm saying her last name right I'm gonna have to look that up our first name right um, and uh, speaking of that as you know I usually mispronounce Aqua Eke Emezi's name incorrectly but um, there you have it they wrote this uh, young adult book that came out I believe last year called Pet let me double check that um, so I think I don't even remember yes so it came out 2019 um, I don't remember where I picked this book up. It might have been at McNally Jackson since I like to wander down in the village and you know back in the day pre-pandemic days would just go there and check uh, out what they had that I wanted um, but I may have also gotten it somewhere else maybe at the children's book fair. Anyway um, so this is a story of Jam and her friend um, Redemption and um, Jam's parents are um, bitter and aloe are um, really supportive, um, deeply cultural, multicultural, uh, African diaspora representing parents, right? And um, I say it that way because I'm not quite sure where they're from, but they definitely remind me of like Caribbean African parents uh, and that's based on some of the dishes that are mentioned in the book and uh, just the way they talk to each other the sort of patois of Bitter who's an artist and Bitter makes this painting um, that has uh, essentially uh, the monster or the creature that um, Jam comes to call Pet and um, what is I don't want to spoil it for you because I think that everybody should read it. I think it's a really great um, metaphorical and lyrical imaginative meditation on what it looks like to empower the children in your world, in your universe, right? So not... Um, that could be anything from in your neighborhood, uh, the the children that you come in contact with. Um, if you're not, if you're like me and you don't have children, and also you don't operate in a world where you spend time with other families, um, thinking about being intentional when you do come across situations where you are with a younger person to empower them to tell the truth about if they are being harmed in some way if they are um, whether it's you know being bullied or it's um, being you know inappropriately touched or um, you know maybe manipulated or you know something that makes them feel um, small smaller than they are and powerless um, I think the book is a wonderful way of reimagining what it looks like to reveal 
the things that we would rather not look at in order to save children and young people and those who would be preyed upon to stop any of these violences before they occur. So um, I hope that that does justice to uh, the general uh, premise of the book and the concept without giving too much of it away. Um, but I mean, I think it's really beautiful. I mean, I think that they do a great job of um, showing rather than telling. Uh, and that makes it read like a myth, like a modern day myth, um, which is uh, soothing and comforting in a, in a strange way at this time. You know, this, we don't really have too many modern myths um, that are redemptive. Um, and redemptive in a way that gives young people agency, you know, the, that, that we are not the ones who are in charge of making their meaning. They make the meaning for themselves. And they ultimately, they and their angels are ultimately um, the judge and jury and not necessarily some outside force, which, you know, can be viewed with complication, right? If you're in a community of color, a marginalized and disenfranchised community, you don't necessarily look to traditional modes of authority, police courts, as being able to redeem anyone. <laughs> um, often they are seen as monsters, right? So um, this was just a really lovely, quick way to think about that. Um, it uh, is about, Let's see, 200 and, 203 pages, and I read it in a really brief amount of time. As a result, I think it took me two to three days, um, but I'm also a quick reader, so, um, and inclined to find uh, methods of escape by way of narrative, so uh, that's probably why it took me that amount of time. But anyway, I hope that you'll pick it up. Um, I hope that if you are reading something else, or if you've read Pet and liked it, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Um, and yeah, if you're not reading that, what else are you reading? What else is going on? Uh, let me know. I'll be back soon with another uh, installment here. Um, like I said, the next video I do will probably be about Ordinary Girls um, because that's what I love the most, um, but have had lots more uh, opinions about books to share very soon so uh, I will I will be sure to share those with you but in, in the meantime take good care of yourself and be well and I'll see you again soon take care